Hey everybody, back with some more uh, comic book convention tips for the artist wanting to set up an artist alley or uh, really um, any other uh, kind of venue like that, uh, whether it's a festival or whatever, and that relates to a question I had. And uh, in this episode, I've got actually four viewer questions, so we'll jump right into those. The first one is from MGART17. Uh, as far as questions, uh, everything. How do you set up your booth? How much money do you need? How good is it to do conventions? Do you give things for free? Thank you for your videos. You're welcome for the videos. Thank you for watching. Um, how do I set up my booth? That takes some experimentation, really. Um, now, there are a difference between booths, uh, strictly booths and tables. So if you are in um, the dealer section, it's really considered a booth. Sometimes it's a little more space. They're way more expensive. Um, you might get a corner kind of thing. Uh, it's a little bit more geared towards people walking in and looking at things. Tables in Artist Alley are typically set up in rows. If you've ever walked down, um, uh, kind of a really any convention, uh, you're set up to display things. Now, as far as, um, if you have a booth, uh, you can, you'll need more stuff, but you have more opportunity to sell. I've only, I think I've only set up, uh, artists typically set up in booths and dealer section as a group. And so you're still kind of set up as a, table the setup is still the same right so but as far as setting up the table uh i've mentioned some of the display stuff uh, it's important if you can get things up um that will help you uh display more things simply because you've got that vertical space as well as horizontal i would also um try to get your prints up um eye level i've talked about that before if you've got books i would invest in uh, you can go to like target or somewhere and they have like these um almost accordion little um, um, uh, book holders, right? Anything that you get your books to sit upright, at least a copy or two, and um, to, to just get some interest, right? Another important thing to set up is have a price list. So many people, and I've been guilty of this too, but uh, neglect the price list. Whether it's just a post-it note in front of the prints that says prints $20 or prints $10 or comic books two dollars or three or whatever you're selling them for but label everything so people don't um don't make people ask now people will still ask people still come up even though the prices are there but um again people are overwhelmed it's a, a convention is an experience in sensory overload so have your prices labeled clearly um arrange things uh you'll have to just experiment so i sell some original art and I don't think I have the, uh, like I've showed before the arts 11 by 17. So I've got art books and that requires some space to flip open. I also have my prints up that helps free up space again for, for that. And then I have books set up. I have GI Joe transformer books that I've worked on. Then William the last over here on another side. So just experiment with it, how to set up, um, how much money you need. I am horrible at this, uh, because I sell, uh, things that I obviously need change for. You might want to price things so that you don't have to think about you're going to have to make change. And as the convention progresses, if you keep having to, I would say avoid, obviously you want to avoid change like coins, but price things, it's easiest to price things in tens, twenties, you know, tens and twenties, because people carry $10 bills and $20 bills. If you price things at 25 or 15, then all of a sudden you've introduced the $5 change thing, which people will you're going to run into, I typically always run into, Hey, looking at my neighbor, can you break a 20? Can you do this? So just keep that in mind. Ideally, I would like to go into a show having maybe 10 to $20 in fives. And I never do this because I'm horrible at prepping, but ideally if I thought about it in time, I would have, uh, fives and tens really. Uh, but if you're selling books for like $2 a piece, then you've got to have ones. So just keep that and just think about it, but don't stress over it. Just try to have a little bit on hand. You will probably definitely need to have a PayPal account or a Squarespace thing with a slider because people are more and more paying with cards now. That wasn't a thing 10 years ago, obviously, but now I've done, I've done shows where most of my stuff is on cards. So get a, get a, get a PayPal account, PayPal reader. Uh, people kind of expect that now. Do I give away things for free? I give away bookmarks and postcards for free. 
I wouldn't give away the danger I ran into early on is you want to give away free things, get people to buy things. But if you're a, if you have more things free for giving away free prints, for example, you're probably not going to sell any prints. So uh, make the free things, small promotional things, and then engage uh, as a way of engaging a conversation with the customer. So hope that helps a little bit. So the second question I had from Felicity Swan, I'm going to a nearby art festival this year and I plan on selling buttons, stickers, postcards instead of prints since I'm new to selling and I hear they're usually easy to sell. I was wondering about the setup for the table and if festivals are usually similar to conventions. I've never been to either one. Also, should I sell prints anyway? I would say go ahead and sell prints anyway. Can't hurt. And if you're doing more and more shows, you'll sell them eventually. I think festivals, art festivals, festivals in general, If even when I walk in like a street festival, they're still set up like shows. You have a table and a display, and then some people have booths. So I would just say, figure out your table setup. And then anywhere you go, you're probably going to get, like I've done shows, shows. I've done like uh, library things, still six to eight foot table. Uh, just, you know, figure that out. And then it pretty much translates to anywhere. You can make it work anywhere. If you've got uh, your stuff displayed, if you've got your books and uh, you've got your banner, you've got your books, you'll fit in or you won't look out of place. Um, so did I get everything there? I think I did. All right. So next question from Citria's Art and Comics channel. I hope I said your name right. I apologize if I didn't. Uh, working on merch right now. First con of the year is at the end of March. So what are your tips for selling original comic salesmanship? What do you find works best to engage with potential customers? Great question. Um, I am not a uh, extrovert by nature at all. I'm an introvert. Uh, conventions drain me a lot. Um, doing a channel is easy because I'm not actually talking, I'm talking to you, but I'm just alone. Um, with that said, I, I do try to be, uh, friendly and, um, uh, the most important thing is just look up. So if you're an artist and you've got commissions, we tend to do this, right? You're sitting there and sometimes you just don't, especially if you've got a hat on or whatever, you don't see people, uh, occasionally make sure you'll to look up as even as an artist when i will walk around and look at other artists one of the things that bugs me is when i'm looking at stuff and the artist never acknowledges me if it's a you know a well-known artist somebody that you, uh, i might like to talk to even if it's just i'm looking at their stuff and they never engage me that's bad all right everybody that comes to your table deserves a hello all right um just say, hey, how's the show going for you? Make a little chit chat, which I'm not great at, but it's a convention. You can say, how's the show treating you? How are you doing? Um, if they look at, like, if they look at a book I've worked on, do you read that? You know, what are you into? There's, is there something at the show that you're, you know, you're looking at? Just, you know, see how they're doing. What are they looking for? The thing is, uh, you'll, from that person's point of view, that will be the conversation they had with you. They'll remember it. And hopefully it'll be pleasant. You will have that conversation 8,000 times. So just get ready. Um, you, after a while, you'll feel like a fake. Uh, it's not really being a fake. It's being salesmanship. I mean, you, you've, you, you need to ask those things of, those things of everybody. Um, and you'll have great, you'll meet actually really fascinating people. You'll meet people that work in the industry you didn't know. If it's the bigger con, you'll meet people in different like media things. But you have to get to know people uh, by doing the little chit chat thing. And people expect it. I mean, it's just, you know, social, uh, pleasantries, but, um, yeah, engage with everybody. Be nice, be friendly. Um, don't be the used car salesman. I've been next to those people and those people are tiring for everybody. They make people avoid your table and they annoy your table mates or your neighbors that bug that, that, that gets old quick for everybody. Um, and it seems disingenuous. Just make conversation. Um, the other thing about selling original books is you need to have an elevator pitch, which is just a short, hey, this is what this book is about. Um, so just condense it down to uh, a few sentences. Try to get it to where it, it piques people's interest. So with William the Last, for example, I say it's a story about a, a boy who was born alone on an island with his grandfather. His grandfather dies. He climbs to the top of a mountain and finds himself in a kingdom where a tyrant's in control. People are in hiding, and his own name has been forbidden from being spoken. And then it goes on from there. So it's just a short little thing to kind of hook people. You want to hook 
Again, you will say it 8,000 times to the point where if you're not a natural salesman, especially if you're an introvert, you just don't even want to say it anymore. I want to promote my book. I want obviously to make money, but I'm so tired of saying this. It's just the nature of the beast. Um, so, so yeah, those things, uh, that, that's about all I have to offer. Again, I'm not a natural salesman, but um, just a few things I picked up over the years. So last question from Lizzie Dixon Art. When deciding to take what to take for a convention, do you usually go for having more variety in what you carry and fewer of each thing or fewer designs and higher quantities of each? I know there's a sweet middle ground. Sounds like a difficult thing to find. Uh, yeah, with prints especially, there, there are kind of staples for uh, comic uh, artists to sell things. Books, prints, original art is kind of like the core. For variety of prints, I'll try out a print. I'll do uh, maybe print out 20. And they're not that expensive. They're, they're, I think when you actually get them printed up, they're, they're not. I mean, prints are not expensive to make. So you can kind of take the hit. And eventually over time, you'll probably sell them. So I, if a print is just, if I sell out of it, I'll, I'll reprint. But you kind of want to ex maybe experiment with lower quantities. And, uh, but you also want to have a variety of different things. You don't want to just have one or two prints. I would say, ideally, you know, you want to have at least, well, at least five minimum. But the more prints you have, the longer people will stand and look. That's why you have the wall of prints, people that sell all kinds of different things because they have people want to see, oh, well, he's got prints. Well, what does he have? The longer a person stands there, the longer you're going to be able to engage with them, the longer, um, the more likely are they are to buy something, the more likely you're going to have their favorite character. So I've done a lot of work on Transformers. The thing I run into there is there's so many characters. Do you have, do you have blaster print? Do you have this? Do you have Perceptor? Do you have this? And usually the answer is no, because there's so many and I've got a lot of prints, but I haven't gotten every character yet. If you know you work for DC or Marvel, do you have Superman? Do you have this? Then you get into obscure characters, right? Do you have do you have the Wonder Twins? No, I well. So I would say the the longer you do it, the more you know what people are looking for, and you can kind of cater to that or not. But you want to have a, a variety of things to choose from. So again, it comes from experience. Um, and that, that, but you don't want to overload and then have this huge repository of things you can't sell. So those are, uh, four questions, four tips. I hope they help you. If you have any other ones, let me know in the comments. I'll try to do more of these, uh, doing this short series on working comic book conventions. So uh, like subscribe, share, hit the bell for notifications, and I'll see you next time.